Hi, I'm Paul and in these videos I'm going to try to share information to help you go faster in sim racing. Today we're going to talk about tyres and the traction circle. How do the tyres grip the track? What is the traction circle? And how can you use this to your advantage? So let's start by talking about tyres. The tyres on the car are the only thing that connects that car to the road and as such these are the most important aspects of how fast a car can go around a track. Different tyres will have different levels of grip available to them based on their tyre compound and so this will affect how much the car can grip in a corner. The reason race cars use racing slick tyres compared to road tyres is that when they're up to temperature they'll be offering a lot more grip and traction than a road tyre. One note on this is what happens with different types of tyre at the limit of grip. A road tyre will progressively allow slip as it heats up and deforms whereas something like a racing slick will be a lot less progressive as it reaches its limit of grip and this is often why cars using these tyres end up spinning out suddenly versus a road car on a normal tyre being able to continually drift around a corner. The most important part of a tyre when it comes to car grip is the contact patch. This is the area of the tyre that is actually in contact with the road. Since tyres are made out of rubber, the contact patch can actually be changing all the time depending on how the car is driven and what area of the track is being driven over, such as an area of compression, or a crest over a hill. If for example a car has a high downforce setup, as the speed increases the amount of pressure downwards on the tyres will increase and therefore the contact patch and the force against it will increase increasing grip. The other way to increase the contact patch of a tyre is to shift the weight of the car towards one end or the other to put more pressure onto these tyre contact patches. Under heavy braking for instance, the weight will shift towards the front of the car, push down more onto the front tyres or lifting the pressure off the rear tyres. This increases the available grip on the front, but decreases it on the rear. Likewise, on hard acceleration, the weight will shift backwards, putting more pressure and thus more grip available on the rear tyres and less on the front. Depending on the type of tyre being used, it will also have an optimal temperature window for when it can give the optimum amount of grip. If you ever watched a Formula 1 race, you'll notice that they put the tyres in heated blankets before fitting them to the car. The reason for this is their tyre compound is designed to offer the most grip at high tyre temperature, so when the tyres are cold they offer very little grip at all. On the other end of the spectrum, if you look at road tyres, especially ones designed for winter weather, these are designed to offer lots of grip even at low temperatures, but have the downside that they will overheat easily if pushed really hard. This is why these tyres would be fairly useless for a racing car on track. Just like when a tyre is too cold, when the tyre is too hot and above its optimal range, it will also offer less grip. Therefore, it's always important to get the tyres up to optimal temperature and avoid pushing the tyre too much to ensure the grip level remains consistent when racing. So now that we understand the fundamentals of how a tyre can grip, let's understand the range of grip that that tyre has. If we say that a tyre has up to 100% grip available at any moment, when we ask that tyre to do something such as braking, accelerating or cornering, we're asking for a proportion of that grip to be used. In a simple example, if we're going down a straight line and we brake really, really hard, then we may surpass that 100% grip level and the tyres will lock up. Likewise, on hard acceleration in a straight line, if we exceed that 100% grip level, we'll be getting wheel spin. This also applies to cornering force. If you turn into a corner and exceed that level of grip on that tyre, you may be faced with understeer or oversteer. So what we're really looking at here is that each tyre on the car may have a percentage of grip capacity left at any moment as it drives around the track. And depending on what you're asking the car to do, these tyres may be at various stages of that grip level. Brake too little or drive too slowly through a corner and we're not using all the available grip that that tyre has available. Brake too hard or drive too aggressively through a corner and we're now exceeding the available grip that the tyre has. The key to going fast in a car is to always maximise using the tyre's grip available without exceeding its total grip. The best way to visualise this in normal usage is to look at a traction circle. On this traction circle we have two axes, the amount of grip being requested in the forward backward direction and the amount of grip being requested on the side to side direction. Often when people learn to drive on track for the first time, their instructor will advise them to carry out all their braking in a straight line and then progressively turn into the corner. The reason for this is that as they brake in a straight line, they're able to easily use the maximum amount of grip on the tyre for just the braking. And then when they turn into the corner, they're now only asking the car's tyres to handle the cornering force. 
And likewise on the exit, if most of the corning has been completed, they're now only asking the tires to handle the acceleration out of the corner. While this is a good starting point for a beginner, it can actually lead to bad habits when it comes to fast driving. To maximize the performance of the car and achieve the optimal times, you want the traction circle to progressively move from the forward point to the side and to the rear as the car goes through the corner. To achieve this, we need to transition gradually from the braking zone to the corner entry by gradually decreasing the braking force while we start applying the turning input. By the apex of the corner, you may now not be doing any braking at all, and so the entire tire's grip is being used for the cornering force. And then on the exit of the corner, you'll want to be gradually increasing the throttle while unwinding the steering to transition the tires from needing to be managing the cornering grip to the acceleration of the car as the traction circle moves towards the rear. One of the common mistakes that new drivers make is to ask for too much from the tires at once. They're carrying too much speed into a corner, braking a lot as they turn in and trying to accelerate too hard too early. Since the tires only have a certain percentage of traction and grip available, exceeding this at any point will lead to understeer or oversteer and a slower speed through the corner. The objective when it comes to fast lap times is to be moving progressively around the traction circle while maximizing the use of the traction available on the tire. If you go too slow or progressive, you won't be utilizing the full extent of the grip available. If you push too hard, you'll be exceeding it. This will take a lot of time and practice, but hopefully if you can start thinking about this as you drive around the track, you'll have a better understanding of where the limit of grip is and how to maximize the use of your tires. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe and stay tuned next week for more tips on how to go faster in sim racing.